All right, let's finish this volume stuff. This is just going to be the last page in the notes <coughs> over the volume, uh, and it's going to be a good page for us because it's going to help us kind of tie everything together. It's even got a little bit of area in it as well. Cool. Here we go. It says, let R be the region bounded by the graphs of Y equals X squared and Y equals 2X. So it's not a calculator for this whole page. In part A, it wants us to find the area. And, and we're really going to do a bunch on this question. We're going to do it really all with X and with Y. We're going to do DX and DY for everything. Uh, so let's just start off by getting a pretty decent sketch. I'm going to do the sketch over here, so that way when I scroll it, I can still see the sketch. Okay, here we go. So there's my X and Y axes, or at least a pretty bad attempt at drawing them. Let's go ahead and draw, uh, graph these things. So I've got Y equals X squared. I know what that is going to look like. It looks more or less like this. Okay, uh, and I'm going to have to solve this. I'm gonna, like Later on, we're going to need it to be in terms of X. So I know if Y equals X squared, that means X is going to be the root of Y. And we're really not going to need the left side. Okay, so this left side, uh, we don't need the X equals negative root of Y. That's why I, I'm only going to use the positive, right? X equals the positive root of Y. That's that right side. I don't really need the left side because uh, this next graph, which I'll do in blue, Y equals 2X, it's going to go through the origin and then it's going to intersect. So there we go. And let's solve that, right? If Y equals 2X, that means X equals one half of y. Okay, so so we have both of those, and I'm actually I'm going to write those over here. Uh, so we have y equals two x, and then we have x equals one half of y. That's my blue curve, which is a function. That's good. And then of course the green is also a function. The green was y equals x squared, so therefore x equals the root of y. Remember, this other side would be x equals the negative root of y. We just don't really care about that side of it. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to I'm going to leave those over there. And then what we're going to be doing is, is pretty much everything twice. We're going to do everything with dx and with dy. But here is the region that's bounded between those two curves. Uh, now let's go find the intersection points pretty quickly uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of go through everything. Let's do the intersection points uh, in red. Uh, so we've got x squared. That's got to be equal to 2x. This one's pretty easy. Uh, move the 2x over, factor out an x. So then we've got the two solutions, 0 and then 2. Uh, so the intersection point's at 0. That's good. And then this intersection point, it's over here at 2. So that's 0. And then the y value up here, that would be 4. Okay, so for a dx integration, we were going to have 0 to 2. And if we have any dy integrations, it's going to be 0 to 4. So that's good. We're, we're ready. We've got the functions both in x's and in y's. We've got the intersection points both for the x's and with the y's. Remember, we really just don't need this one since we're not fussing with that left side. Let's go for it. Let's do the area, and we're going to do it twice. We're going to do it with dx, and we're going to do it with dy. Pretty much everything on this page, we're going to do it twice, once with dx and once with dy. Let's do the area. Here you go. I'm going to do all the dx in purple, and I'll do the dy uh, with all right, if we, find a, if we want to find the area, we know the area is going to be the integration from the left to the right, but what I integrate is the top minus the bottom. So that S value, right, if, I, if I'm doing a dx integration, that means I have these little vertical slices, and the length of that slice is S, it's top minus bottom. Uh, so I'm going to have the top Y, which is 2X, minus the bottom Y, which is X squared. And there we go, right? That's a pretty easy integral to set up. Let's go ahead and work this one out. All the volume stuff, we're just going to set up the integral. We're not going to do it. But let's actually compute the area. If I were to integrate it, I would get x squared minus one-third x cubed. And then that would be evaluated from 0 to 2. It says find the area, so that's going to have to actually calculate it. If I plug in 2, I'm going to have 4 minus 8 thirds. That's the upper evaluation. The lower evaluation is all going to be 0. So 4 minus 8 thirds, that's the same thing as 12 thirds minus 8 thirds. So we're going to get this answer is 4 thirds. There's the area of the region, 4 thirds, slightly bigger than 1. All right, let's do the same area for the same region, but let's do it with dy. And we're pretty much going to do all this stuff, at least the parts b and c uh, and yeah, I think that's it. I think just b and c we can do both dx's and dy's. Uh, but for a dy integration, 
uh, we would have those little horizontal slices. So instead of doing uh, top minus bottom from the left to the right, now we're going to do the right minus the left, and then we'll integrate from, from the bottom up to the top, right, to accumulate all of those horizontal slices. Right, that one, and that one, and that one, right, all of those. Those are our dy integrals from the bottom zero up to the top four. All right, so let's go for it. Uh, area equals the integral from zero to four, and then it's going to be the right curve, which is the root of y minus the left curve, which was <clears throat> one half of y dy. Remember, you needed to get those x equals equations so that I could have the curve defined by the variable y. So there we go. That looks different than the integral we set up with x's. Uh, let's work it out. If I were to integrate it, that's going to be, let's see, that's one half. So if I add one, three halves, divide by that new number, and then that's going to be one fourth y squared. Uh, so I could integrate it even with its y's, and then let's plug it in. If I plug in four, let's see, two thirds, let's do Four to the square root would be two, two cubed would be eight, and so we're going to end up having 16 thirds minus four squared is 16, divided by four is four, so there's the upper evaluation. Again, the lower evaluation is going to be zero, so we have 16 thirds minus four, 16 thirds, four is the same thing as 12 thirds, oh, there we go, 16 minus 12, once again, we end up getting four thirds. So whether we did it with uh, dx or whether we did it with dy, uh, the processes are different, right? The integrals you set up are different, the integration you do is different, uh, even kind of that arithmetic you do at the end is different. Even that second to the last kind of step, right? Here we ended up having, uh, I guess I shouldn't use that, uh, we had 16, actually let's, let's not do that one, uh, we had 16 thirds minus 4 and then here we ended up having 4 uh, minus 8 thirds, like those looked different but when they reduced they ended up reducing uh, to that same thing. Okay, so the whether we do it with dx or whether we do it with dy, it really doesn't matter. We can always do either. Area, we can always do either. There we go. Now let's do the volume. And for volume, we can always do either as well. Uh, so we're going to do the dx and we're going to do the dy. So I'm going to do the dx in purple and then we'll do the corresponding dy with pink. Uh, let me let me dip, get rid of all this stuff. We don't really need the intersection points anymore, so let me get rid of all of that. There we go. Cool beans. Let's do the dx for part b. It says write, but do not evaluate the integral expression that could be used to find the volume of the solid form by revolving it <clears throat> around the horizontal line y equals negative 3. So let's do that axis of revolution, and let's do it in orange. y equals negative 3, so that's going to end up being uh, below my region, right? y equals negative 3. And let's do the dx first. So if we're going to do dx, uh, that means I would take that little vertical slice. What color should I do? I'll do the brown so to draw the figures. If I'm going to actually uh, do this, uh, I'm going to take this slice. I'm going to revolve it. Inner point revolves around, creates the hole. Outer point revolves around uh, and creates the outside edge. So there, if I were to take that, um, that, that dx integration and revolve it, uh, I'm going to end up getting, since, since the slice is vertical dx and the axis is horizontal, those are perpendicular, when I revolve this, I'm going to end up getting the washers. Okay, I'm going to erase that for just a second, because I know this dx, that's going to end up being washers. Okay, I guess now I'll redraw it. Here we go. There's the, uh, there's the inner point that revolves around, creates the hole. The outside point revolves around, create the outside edge. Remember, since that region has empty space and it's not completely flush up against the actual illusion, that's how we know that it's washers and it's not the, the solid disks. Okay, so from this we need to identify the big radius and the little radius. I guess I should do it all in purple because that's what I said I was going to do. So washers, I need the big radius and I need the little radius. Okay, here's the big radius. It's the distance from the axis revolution to that farther point. Uh, this distance we know is going to be 3. This distance is y. So for that big radius, we can write 3 plus y, or y plus 3. It doesn't matter. 3 plus y, y plus 3. Cool. Which y value? Well, the big radius was dealing with that point, which is on the blue curve. Uh, so it's going to end up being uh, the, the 2x plus 3. Now the little radius would be this distance. So it's going to be the distance from your axial revolution to the closer point, 
Remember, this chunk is still 3, this chunk is still y, so once again, we're going to end up finding that that little radius is y plus 3, or 3 plus y, but it's the other y. It's the y value corresponding to the closer point, which now would be on the green curve, so now it's going to be the x squared plus 3. And then once we've got it all set up, we're pretty much ready. Integrate the area to get the volume. Let's go for it. Here we go. Volume. What coefficient goes out in front for discs or for the washers? Pi. It's going to be pi, and then I'm going to have the integral. This is a dx integral for from the left to the right. So from 0 to 2, it's going to be pi. Big R squared, so 2x plus 3 squared minus the little r squared, x squared plus 3. And there we go. That's the integral, pi. And then if you were to integrate 0 to 2 and then do uh, 2x plus 3 quantity squared minus the x squared plus 3 quantity squared, that's the integral that you could do to get you that volume. Right? Remember, that one was uh, the washers, which means if the, if the dx was washers, when I do the dy, now this one is going to end up being shells. I guess I, what color should I use? Uh, I've kind of used almost everything. I'll do yellow. Why not? Uh, I'll do yellow. So here we go. The dy is going to end up being shells. This is going to be a little bit hard to see, but whatever. Actually, I've used yellow also. Oh, so many decisions. I wish I had like a couple more colors. I guess I can use like the dark green. That's probably going to be okay. Or orange. Mm, no, I used the orange. I don't really have a whole bunch of red. I can use the red. I think the red will be okay. Uh, let's do the red. Uh, so let's go for it. Here we go. This is going to end up being shells. I don't know why I don't just use the darker color. Whatever. I'm committed now. I'm going to use the red. Here we go. Uh, when I take that horizontal slice uh, for the y for the dy and then that horizontal axis, now that those are parallel, that point is going to revolve around. That point is going to revolve around. And then we have this cylindrical shell. That was really pretty bad. I'm going to redo it because it was ugly. I always try to keep it a little bit narrower. Typically, the narrower you keep your little circles, the better it gets. But Mm, no, that looks still pretty ugly. And that, yeah, that's what I kind of was afraid. The washer kind of makes it pretty nasty also. Oh, well, uh, we have this, uh, this cylindrical, uh, uh, that cylindrical shell. Uh, this is going to end up being uh, the height. And then this distance right here from my axis of revolution uh, to the slice, right? So I guess this distance right there, that would be your radius. Okay, so for the shells, we have the height. And then we have the radius. Now the height is just the length of the slice, which is going to be right minus left. And then that radius, this chunk is 3, that chunk is y, so again it's going to be 3 plus y. Let me get rid of all this stuff so it kind of clears it up. Uh, let's see, get rid of that, get rid of that, there we go. Uh, and so the height was right minus left, it was the distance of that slice. Uh, so the right was the root of y. Oh, I wanted to do it in pink, didn't I? Yep. I guess I could just leave it, whatever. Uh, there we go. So there's the, there's the bottom part revolving. There's that part revolving. There we go, more or less. All righty. Here we go. So I need the R and I need the H. The height uh, was just the length of that slice. So right minus left, and that was the root of Y minus 1 half. Come on, smart board. Uh, uh, minus 1 half of Y. And notice, that's the same order, right, that we did for the area. Right. right and left haven't swapped, so it should be the same order. If for some reason you did the one-half y minus the root of y, that would be a problem. Things shouldn't change orientation. Things are going to come uh, and be really consistent throughout this page. All right, but then if we did uh, the, the radius, remember uh, this chunk was 3, that chunk is y, so then that radius we could write it as y plus 3. Remind me, what was the radius for both of those washers? Uh, does it look familiar to the radius of the shell? It should because it's the same. Okay, so there we go. A lot of consistency that comes up. And because these things are really like these, these two like, corresponding buddies, right? The washers is the dx, the shells is dy. There's lots of similarities. They're just slightly different. Here we go. Let's set it up. The volume, integrate the area to get the volume. Uh, but for the cylindrical shells, it's the lateral area. So it's 2 pi r h. That's the formula we integrate. So 2 pi. And then I need r times h, so y plus 3, and then the root of y, oops, that's not a y, the root of y minus one half of y. Of course, this is a dy integral, so I'm going to be integrating 
from that bottom slice up to the top, so from zero to four. Now that integral for the shell method looks very different than the integral for the washer. Right? The setups were different, the two geometric shapes are different, the washer versus the cylindrical shell. Uh, I you know, have two radii for the washers, or have the height and the radius for the shell. There's some consistencies both within this part, uh, specifically the radii, uh, and then also there's some similarities to that order of the subtraction for the height of the shell, and then also the area. Like there's lots of things that come in common throughout this page. But those integrals look different, and that process looks different. Uh, but if I were to math nine, either of those two things, you would get the same answer. You would get the same decimal. That three-dimensional shape, whether we build it by stacking those washers from the left to the right, or whether we build it by, by having these cylindrical shells from that innermost shell to that outermost shell, uh, whether we compile it with the washers or the shells, we're still going to end up with that same three-dimensional shape, uh, and so we're going to get the same volume. Right? It doesn't look like it, but you can check. Pause the video, get out your calculator, math mine both of those, it's going to match. Uh, because it's the same region and you're revolving it around the same axis. The fact that you do it with the X, which was washers, versus doing it with dy, which in this case was shells, it doesn't make a difference. The final result will be the same. All right, let's do the part B now. It says, or the part C. Uh, so write but do not evaluate the integral expression that can be used to find the volume uh, revolved around, now we're going to do X equals 5. I really wish I could just get those... I wish I could like only erase the brown and the red. Mm. Oh well. I don't want to erase everything because then it's going to look ugly. Oh well, let's do it. X equals 5. That's going to be over here on the right side. So X equals 5. Uh, and so let's, let's go ahead and do the dx integration. So if I do the dx integration, I would take this slice, and that slice is vertical. And if I'm doing X equals, that means that line's also vertical. So now when I revolve that around, now the dx integration is going to end up being the shells. All right, so here, this one is the shells. So I have an r and an h that I need to identify. The radius of this shell right, is the distance from the axis of revolution to that slice. Uh, the total distance here is 5. This distance right here is x. Uh, so my radius is going to be subtraction, 5 minus x. Let me get that out of there. 5 minus x is the radius. 5 minus x. And then the height of that cylindrical shell. Oh, I forgot to do the one more under. Oh, well, here's the height of the cylinder, which is, again, just going to be the length of the slice, which is top minus bottom. So here we go. That's going to be 2x top minus the x squared. Again, notice there's some similarities. The height for the, for the shell, that should be the same subtraction that we did for the area. That was true for this one with the dx for the shell, and it was true also for this one when we did the dy for the shell. The height for the shell should still be that same order for the subtraction, because the top versus the bottom haven't changed, neither when we did the previous one did the right or the left. But here we go. We've got the, the two parts identified. So now the last thing is just to throw it all together. Volume, 2 pi is the coefficient for shells. The dx is left to right. So we'd be compiling all the shells from all of these slices, starting with the left one at 0, all the way to that right one over there at 2. So 0 to 2 are going to be your integration limits. So 0 to 2, and then it's r times h. There we go. And that's an integral that would get us the volume. Let's get another one, though. Why not? Let's just do it uh, with dy also. Here, if I were to do the dy integration, Remember, there's my slice. I've got the point on the blue. I've got the point on the green. That's a horizontal slice for a dy integral. And now I've got a vertical axis. So now those are going to be perpendicular. If I were to revolve this around, try to see it through all those colors, now the pink thing, uh, I'm just going to make it worse, but really I'm trying to make it better, but it's just going to, I'm just making it worse. Now I have a washer. So since the, uh, since the dx was shells, I really knew the, the dy was going to be washers. It's rare to really ever have disks. Uh, disks, you need that region to be completely flush up against the axis of revolution. Right? No empty space. Anytime there's any empty space, it's a washer. Uh, so most of the time it's washers. Uh, but for the washers, we have the big radius and we have the little radius. Now I guess I'll use the other colors because it's getting kind of nasty. The big radius is the distance from that axis of revolution to the farther point. 
right? So here's your big radius. Uh, and then we know that total horizontal distance, right? That's five. And then this little distance is X. So that big radius right here is going to end up being five minus X. And now before I even bother really looking at it, I know what the little radius is going to be. Right? If you picked up on this, the big and the little radius, they're always the same. The little radius is this distance, the distance from the axis of revolution to the closer point. Uh, but the total here is, again, 5. This distance is x, but it's the other x. Right? The big radius was dealing with this point, the point that was farther away, which for us is the x value on the blue curve. So the big radius is going to be 5 minus, and then it was the 1 half of y. And then the little radius was dealing with this point, which is on the green curve. So it's going to be the x. That's the root of y. So 5 minus x is both of the radii. By the way, do you remember what the radius was for the shell? You should. It was the same thing. Uh, lots of consistencies throughout all this area and volume stuff. Uh, but there we go. We're ready. We got It's a dy integral. We got it both in the correct variable now. So we just got to throw it together. Integrate the area to get the volume. Pi. And then I need the big R squared. Minus the little r squared dy. And then we would be compiling all those slices from the bottom one at 0 up to the top one at 4. Woo! Okay, so there we go. Again, you, if you don't believe me, you are welcome to, to Math 9, either this or this. Uh, but whether you, you do the dx, which in this case was shells, or whether you do the dy, which in this case was washers, you're going to end up getting the same. Now notice, that's kind of different. On part B, the dx was washers and the dy was shell. And then here on part C, uh, it, was, it was reversed. Remember, dx is always a vertical slice. dy is always a horizontal slice. And, and so those two are, are always going to be opposites of each other. And depending on where your axis and what your axis is, that's going to dictate which one is which. Since on part B, we have y equals negative 3, that was horizontal. So dx was going to be perpendicular, a.k.a. washers, and the dy is parallel, so that's shells. But for part c, we did x equals, we did a vertical line. So then the dx integration, which also is a vertical slice, dx now is parallel to that respective axis of revolution, whereas the dy is now perpendicular. Okay, so one of them, they're like these two partners. I don't know why people would ever not teach shells, because it's, it's kind of silly. Right? You can always do either. They're going to work. Sometimes one of them is a little bit easier than the other, but honestly, they're about the same. They're like these two counterparts. You know, the dx is going to be one, the dy is going to be the other, and it's, it's really just re in reference to uh, what axis of revolution do you have. Do you have a vertical axis or do you have a horizontal axis? Because the dx uh, vertical slice and then the dy horizontal slice, one of those will be perpendicular to your axis and the other Perpendicular is washers, or maybe if you're lucky, a solid disk, uh, and then the, the parallel one is going to be your shells. All right, very good, all that stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear this out, and I'm going to redraw the diagram just so uh, it's like not as terrible, and then we're going to do the last couple parts, and then we'll be done. Here we go. Let's clear all this stuff out, and then let me let me move this up, and then let me I'm, let me actually redo the diagram first, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move it up. Here we go. Okay, we have this, this. I think I did, I don't remember which one I did. I think, ooh, I probably did this one in green. I don't remember. I think I did the parabola in green. There we go. And then we had uh, the, the line in blue. I think, I'm not exactly sure. The blue, I think, was y equals 2x. Therefore, x equals 1 half of y. And then the green one was uh, y equals x squared. Therefore, x equals the root of y. Cool. And then we had that region, which I like to shade in yellow. There we go. And then we have the intersection points. <clears throat> we solved for it. Uh, this was at zero, obviously. That intersection point uh, was at the x value of two, and then the y value was at four. All right, cool. Let's move it up and let's do the last, last two parts. <clears throat> Get out of there. All right, here we go. It says now. Uh, now we're going to end up having, uh, now it says R is the base of a, of a region, uh, or a base of a solid, and, and for that solid, each cross-section is going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. Remember, that means dx. You don't get to choose for the cross-section. It's going to tell you 
one or the other. If it says perpendicular to x dx, and it says it's an equilateral triangle. Remember this? Uh, the area of that equilateral triangle is root 3 over 4 s squared. The other one that's kind of wonky that we see a lot, pi over 8 s squared, uh, that's your semicircle. Right? So you should know that, but, but the, the equilateral triangle, that's the one uh, that's the one that comes up in this question. Okay, here we go. It says, right, but do not evaluate the integral expression. So we've got a dx integral. So again, I'm going to think about having this vertical slice. Uh, and then here is your s value. Right? S is just the distance from the top to the bottom. Uh, and so here we go. I know the area is root 3 over 4 s squared. My s is top minus bottom. And it's that same top minus bottom. Right? It's going to be 2x minus x squared top minus bottom, and that order for the subtraction, that's the same that we did when we found the area using dx, and that's the same that we did when we had uh, the cylinder, uh, or when we did the shells, and we had the height was one of them was a 2x minus x. That order for the subtraction should really never flip, right? Because the 2x, that's still on top, the x squared, that's still on bottom. That order for the subtraction should really be consistent throughout this entire page. Uh, no matter whether we're doing area or volume or different type of volume. Okay, but there we go. Now we're ready. We got the area formula. We know what the S is. Uh, so now we're ready. Integrate the area to get the volume. Here we go. Root 3 over 4. And then the integration, since it's a dx integral, it's from 0 to 2. And then we have S squared. Bam. Done. Now let's move to the last one, which will be the, another cross-section that says the region R, uh, whatever, whatever. Okay, it says perpendicular to the y-axis. I don't want to read the whole thing. Perpendicular to the y-axis means dy, and it tells me it's a square. I love squares. Squares are the easiest, right, because if that is my s value, then everything else is also s. So now that area is just going to be s squared. But if it's a dy integration, I have those horizontal slices, and so the s value is going to end up being not top minus bottom, it's going to be right minus left. So it's x minus x, but it's the right x minus the left x. And again, that order for the subtraction should be the same as the order that we did the area with when we did the dy area. Or that order should be the same as when we did a shell method, and that came up as one of the heights. That order for the subtraction should not be different. Okay, but now we're ready, right? Integrate the area to get the volume. Really, this one doesn't have any coefficients because it's just s squared. So we're going to integrate s squared. It's a dy integral. We're going to accumulate from the bottom up to the top to get all those horizontal slices. So from 0 to 4, and then plug it in root of y minus 1 half of y. And there we go, right? This volume stuff is kind of tricky, especially uh, if you can't visualize it. But the more you practice, the better you will get. Uh, remember, top minus bottom, right minus left, both of those are the way to get our S values, which is really the length of the slice, the distance in between those two things. If we have to revolve it around a region, we could either have washers or maybe disks if you're lucky, but generally it's going to be washers, or you could have shells. Uh, one of those will be dx, the other will be dy, uh, but we have those volumes of revolution, and then we also have the volumes by cross-section which is when that, that region is just flat, that's the base of our solid, and we build straight vertically upwards and out of it using a specific cross-sectional shape. But in general, how you get the volume is you integrate the area. Whether you're doing a revolution, you may have a, a circular area like a disk, pi r squared, or you may have that washer with the holes. So you have pi and then big R squared minus little r squared. Integrate the area to get the volume. Or if it's a shell, you're really doing the lateral area of a cylinder, 2 pi r h, but that's still integrating the area to get the volume, or if it's a cross-sectional volume, just find the area formula of one slice. Get it either in terms of x or in terms of y, depending on your integration method. And then again, integrate area to get the volume. That's kind of the big takeaway from this unit, integrate the area to get the volume. All right, that's it for it. That wraps up all of our, uh, all of our volume stuff. I know it's a little bit weird. This is probably one of the top five most difficult things we do all year, but uh, the more you practice with it, uh, the better the better you'll get. Hopefully. <laughs>